Hello everybody, welcome to The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. Alright, so what do we got going on here? We have got a grass growing here. Now this is a low-tech setup. This used to be my high-tech setup, believe it or not, if you go about six months or... I guess any time before May, if you go back and look at the videos before May of 2019, you'll see that this tank was not in such disarray. But rather, I have been using this tank to grow out plants in which to put upstairs in my main aquascape. And then I kind of rotate through, basically, and I end up putting new plants uh, and new fixtures, new places, if that makes sense. And then kind of cycle through which tank is a grow out tank. And, um, you know, in the meantime, my shrimp are in here cleaning up algae and other things. But you can see here, I'm growing actual algae on a uh, a piece of spider wood on purpose all this moss has grafted on there naturally there's no string or glue left anymore on there and same with the piece down below i know it's kind of hard to see but what we're talking about today is this funky grass right here and so i want you guys to see it in low tech it has a green uh golden green kind of look down the center of each actual uh, leaf. Sorry, my hands are dirty. I've been digging in the tank. But then it has a kind of a lime green color around that. Now, in low tech, that's kind of how it grows. And the underside, sometimes, once in a while, you'll get kind of a yellowish or um, kind of a lime green mixed with a bronze color. And that's kind of the extent of its growth but it will grow very quickly. Now, what is this plant? Well, this plant is called Potomagetan uh, Gaii, and it grows really interestingly. So if you look at that, it has one leaf growing out of one side, then another leaf, and then it'll have another leaf, and then another leaf off the other side, and then the pattern changes. Then there's just one leaf. And then there's another leaf. So it doesn't have a really consistent pattern of how it grows. It just grows upward, if that makes any sense. So if you cut it, it's not going to branch off like most stem plants. It is really more of a grass. And so no matter what you do, it's going to grow upward. And it will have these two to six inch uh, fronds of leaves coming off. But there are they're so skinny um, and these were all growing in here like this. I've already taken the time to cut them and organize them by the side that I'm going to plant upstairs. And this grass will grow several feet tall. Um, as it got high, high in the tank up towards the top of the water, you can see that it actually takes on kind of a brownish bronze color as well as that green and lime metallic green. And that kind of makes it interesting. So uh, let me show you what happens when we get it in some high-tech tank with CO2 and lots of fertilizers and all that rather than just these grow-out tanks. Because right now, I need to re-aquascape this tank and this tank because I've raided them for plants. And I haven't been using CO2 or fertilizers on any of them. So... Let's go upstairs, looking at this Potomagetan gay eye, and uh, it's an interesting plant in that it doesn't resemble a lot of the rest of its family. It actually kind of resembles more of a, you know, a cypress health fry, which cypress health fry is planted back there, that big wispy grass, but it grows out of clumps. Whereas this one, if we take a look at one, this is a very tedious plant uh, to take care of at first. And then it kind of takes off on its own. So let me get a strain, strand uh, of it here. That's big enough. There's some little ones too. But anything with that stem is going to grow. And if you look at it, here, we'll look at it where there's not as much reflection. Uh, if you look at it, it grows really interestingly. If we hold it underwater, you'll probably see it better. It grows very interestingly 
Um, like I said, there's not a pattern to how these long wispy leaves grow off of it. But when it's in high light and CO2, you get these beautiful uh, pink and every so often you'll get a purple or magenta colored leaf coming off of it. No rhyme or reason to it. When you cut it, it doesn't grow into two parts. So it's not like a stem plant. Like if I cut, well, here's a good example right here. If I cut this Ludwigia repens, I cut it down at the base. Now it has two parts. If I cut this, it'll have two more. And that's how you get plants to fill out, to look bushy when you're doing aquascaping. However, that's not the case with this plant. With this plant, I literally will be placing it one stem at a time into the ground and just letting it grow out. Um, and my main goal with this, oh, there goes the algae eating shrimp. Those are giant algae eating shrimp. They're the smallest of the dwarf shrimp in the world, which is kind of a funny thing to say because there's plenty of just normal shrimp that are way bigger than them. Uh, but those are the short-nosed Japanese algae-eating shrimp from Aquatic Arts. And this plant is, despite online saying that it's a common U.S. hobby plant, it's really not. I haven't seen it in stores ever. Uh, I see it online from time to time. I've seen it uh, online, and so you can find it there. It's not too expensive. Even a year or two ago, it was going for about $20 for a few little uh, trimmings, maybe 3 to 5 and now it's it's more like $6 for three stems or something like that. So $2 a stem or something like that. Um, but it's not a fussy plant. It will grow like you saw downstairs, even like at the base of where this is growing. It'll grow green with that cool uh, golden stripe. Um, in a higher tech with higher furts uh, tank, it'll get a metallic sheen to it, kind of like a Busophilandra or a Laganandra Meboldi does, um, the Busa Philander in this tank right, being right here. Um, them all, they all have that kind of metallic sheen. So I thought it would be a neat plant to kind of uh, create this wall with. You can actually see, here's a really tall one back here right now. So you have to plant it fairly densely, and eventually it will start growing uh, runners. And that is uh, partially going to be determined by your substrate and by the health of the plant, but also by um, whether it's getting limited. So like if it's grown to the top of the water, it, it, do it doesn't have the rigidity. It has a very soft, hollow stem, and the leaves are very soft uh, and, and floppy, and they can't hold themselves up outside of the water. It's, it's an underwater kind of plant at this stage. Now, you can grow it, I believe, outside of the water um, if you start it that way, but from this point, it'll have to all melt back and then regrow. Um, by the way, this is a protein film that has grown uh, or developed across the top of the tank. It's just from, uh, they had blood worms last night and uh, a few other things for the plecos because the plecos have brand new babies. But this plant, as far as care goes, you just you just want to take it by the side that you uh, that has the little root, the little wiry root. Believe it or not, that's all the tap root is. And sometimes you can get away with burying it sideways, and it will sprout new uh, new directional uh, at, uh, growth at a ninety degree angle. But honestly, that, that doesn't pan out most of the time. It'll just die kind of suffocated. So I recommend just planting it one stem at a time in clumps next to one another. Get it growing thickly. And then it'll, it'll kind of uh, grow entangled in its uh, next door neighbors. And if you have... You know, I've got decent flow in this aquarium, and if you've got decent flow, you can really get some cool, um, just kind of it moving and waving, and uh, if you have little shrimps or little uh, ember tetras or, you know, little neon blue tetras, some any small, small little fish, uh, they really like kind of zooming through it. It moves out of their way. It parts before them. Now, this plant is from South America. You thought I was going to say something else, maybe South Africa? No. It's from South America, 
and uh, down there it grows in the uh, in the low the lowlands as well as some highland marshes, but it's it's grown mostly in subtropical uh, climates where in the summer it will grow crazy. It's actually called water weed or pond weed down there. So to them, it's not really uh, respected. You know, it's kind of like milfoil or something. But, it, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And to me, when you get it growing up in these tall fronds, you can cut it and replant it, and it's just going to keep growing straight out of the same spot it started growing. Um, and then I'm going to have, you know, other plants, crypts and things in front of it. But that will be my backing along with some rotala in the corners. Um, but it's it's a plant that can tolerate, you know, 78 degree uh, weather, 80 degree weather. And by weather, I mean water. Uh, under, under the sea in fresh water. So that's not the sea either. I'm on a roll. Um, but yeah, it can tolerate probably 80 degrees year round without a problem. It's, it's, it is kind of a weed after all. And that's the temperature of the water when it kind of, um, flourishes in the spring, uh, which is the opposite of our spring. If we're in the Northern hemisphere, that's during our fall. And, uh, sometimes I've noticed that these plants, if they're not uh, accustomed to the aquarium life for uh, many, many uh, iterations of their growth, uh, they actually will bloom and uh, color up during the time of year that it is down there. So, so getting ready for summer. When we're getting ready for winter, this grass looks the best for me here. Now, there's other strains of it um, in other aquariums, and it, it's going to vary depending where you are. If you're in Europe, you guys have had access to this plant for 40 years, and it has been common, uh, a common background plant in the tanks. Uh, and it's probably acclimated just fine. But if it's been brought over, you know, as a tissue culture or something, uh, it's also going to sink to your your climate conditions wherever you're at where it was conceived in the hemisphere it was conceived but yeah if you get wild you know cut specimens uh even if you know a few years of cutting and cutting it remembers that which is something kind of cool about it not all plants are like that um and the other cool thing about it is that um it it can actually respond in the roots to itself so if if fish are chewing on the plant um it has a response with um with chemicals that it sends a signal to itself and as it starts to interconnect and get denser it actually can put out a bitter chemical uh in the rest of the the plant so if i had a fish that was eating eating it um it would soon get a mouthful of bitter. Uh, if it started eating over here, uh, it would be bitter all over for a few hours, which is just kind of interesting. So I guess if you wanted to eat it as a human, not that I'm in endorsing that, you got to sneak up on it. You got to, it knows you're coming. But that means it has some sort of uh, chemical signal going on through the roots that's probably fairly complex. And uh, a lot of plants actually have... Um, have mycorrhizal relationships which means that that means they have a relationship with the actual uh, fungi that grow in between their roots and in the soil or or mud of their their roots and they exchange things like sugar or potassium things that they can fix uh from the soil and things that the uh that the the fungi can't and whereas the fungi might be able to fix say uh i don't know a certain potassium ion that is used for communication of cell um you know growing cells under certain uh lighting conditions it can share that with the fungi because it allows it to grow on its on its roots and then right here you can see kind of a nice example of uh, its full potential of it kind of um, branching out like that 
it it looks orderly but if you start counting it's unlike a lot of plants in that it has it's coming off uh not one side then the other one side then the other it it's random it will sometimes look like one side then the other one side then the other but um that's that's all it is it's a it's an illusion so i hope you guys give this plant a shot it is a little bit of work you're gonna have to trim it quite a bit but um you know, that's not always a bad thing. It takes a lot of nitrates out of the tank. And if you get the water flowing, like right now I have the current wrapping around, but if the current was a little lighter, it would just kind of lightly float there and you're gonna see all the reds and bronzes coming out of the leaf with gold and then lighter bronze as that middle leaf color and kind of get a nice kind of limnophilia bellum look to it. That would be a great plant to put with it or Eria columns or something like that, like Eria column Vietnam that, that has flowers down below. Right now I've got another plant that lives right next to it, actually two. I've got Cabamba, um, it's not the Car Caroliniatus, it's a Cabamba uh, bellum, which is from down in South America, and then I've also, or so, sorry, that's um, Bacopa, and then this is a Cabamba furcata, which is the red version, uh, or orange version, pink and orange, and that is also from South America, uh, south of the Amazon rainforest, so you find it below that zone with the rainforest, which is kind of a pretty narrow band in one continent, so it's a, a unique biotope uh, that has some really beautiful plants. Uh, you know, another beautiful plant is going to be the Sao Paulo, um, the uh, Persicaria Sao Paulo that grows down there. Now, it grows a little north of there, too, but it's just another beautiful plant that puts leaves out randomly at random different spots. So that's another one that I have a few cuttings of growing back there, too. So it's kind of a South American biotope going on in this tank so far. In fact, I, you know, it pretty much is other than the Anubius and the, uh, the fern. So, all right, guys, that's what I have to teach you about uh, <laughs> a Ponogeton. No, it's not a Ponogeton. It's Potamogeton, which is a different family of plants. Potamogeton gayi, and that's G-A-Y-I, uh, or gayi, gayi. People argue with me on how to pronounce it. I don't care how you pronounce it, but it's spelled that way. And it's not an Aponogeton like the Madagascar lace plants. It is a uh, Potomogeton. So there you go. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Have a great day. Take care of your tank, your critters, the people around you. And of course, yourself, so you can do those first things. And if we all do those things, or at least two out of the three, life is going to be a whole lot better. So let's try to do that. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Swim on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You'll listen to me yap on for this long. Bye.